Wow, that thing's so fast. It's like a blur coming out. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. Got a little knife review coming your way. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the afternoon of 20 October 2013. Got a knife review for you today. One that <clears throat> has been, I guess, a long time coming on this channel. One of those iconic folding knives of the last decade or so. One that I don't presently own in my collection. I have owned a couple of them. It is the Kershaw Blur been around for quite a few years and as you can tell the example that we're taking a look at today has been well used hasn't it just take a look at the battle scars on this baby I would say that these old aluminum handles have held up pretty well given the level of abuse this knife has taken. This one is in for sharpening from my buddy Alf. Alf is the uh, <clears throat> Alf is the guy who put my title together for me that you just saw at the beginning of this video, Big Guy Productions. And it's not this knife's first rodeo at the Apostle P sharpening bench. I have done extensive work keeping this thing together over the last few years. It's been tipped, it's been chipped, it's, uh, well, it's basically had the serrations worn off. You'll see that better from the backside. Not a bad tip job, huh? Hard to tell it was even broken, and it was broken bad. Probably lost, well, I don't know, an eighth of an inch of blade. Well, let's talk about this knife a little bit. Because it's kind of a famous one, I would venture to guess that, you know, in the population of every man type knife collectors in this country, what do you think? 85, 90% of them have a Kershaw blur <clears throat> in their collections. <clears throat> Let's get down to some specifics. Let's talk about size and weight first off. What we have is a Kershaw Speed Safe assisted folding knife kind of a medium to large EDC or small backup tactical blade blade length of three and three eighths inches this one three and a quarter because it lost about an eighth of an eighth of an inch of its tip a couple years ago uh, let's see handle length is four and a half which gives you an overall length of seven and seven eighths inches the blade steel on current offerings, and frankly, the blade steels are many. The standard blur, uh, of which this is one, constructed from Sandvik 14C28N, stainless steel. Uh, I've talked extensively about that steel and its brother, uh, 13C26, in other videos. And as you can see, patented. Kai Cutlery, made in USA. Don't know if this has got a born date on it anywhere. Uh, I don't see one. I believe this knife's about four or five years old. Probably one of the first ones in 14C28. Earlier ones were 13C26. It is spring assisted, meaning when the blade is extracted from the handle using the thumb stud deployment once it gets out to there it's gonna fly open propelled by a spring until it gets to there then momentum will carry it through to lockup great system 
uh, and one that's very reliable in, here's the asterisk, in American produced Kershaws. Uh, the Chinese produced speed safe knives break a lot of springs. The spring that propels these speed safe knives out to deployed, to full deployed state is a torsion bar, just a piece of round wire uh, spring steel that is shaped, bent into uh, the shape it needs to be. It anchors down here in this part of the knife and propels the blade around sort of like a cam. Um, and it's notched to fit into a slot back here and it's notched to fit into the blade at the other end. Uh, so there's some pretty tight bends. <clears throat> the American knives have a little thicker piece of spring steel and the bends are a lot cleaner. I've seen lots of the Chinese Kershaw speed safe knives that the torsion bar spring has broken. And every one of them I've seen them break on a really raggedy chewed up bend, which is exactly what you'd expect. Uh, the American Kershaw speed safe knives, much cleaner, much smoother, don't hardly ever see them fail. So we've got a weight to get back to our dimensions of 4.2 ounces. Maybe just a little heavy for its class, but not horrible. The handle scales or the handle frame itself made of uh, 6061 T6 anodized aluminum. And they're anodized in many, many colors, black, red, uh, brown, <clears throat> green, you've all seen them. And the steel choices are many on these knives too, depending on how much you want to pay. I've seen them with S30V, 154CM. Uh, have I seen a D2 blur? Maybe so. Maybe even some, uh, some composite blade blurs over the years. Two basic blade shapes they come in. As you can see, this one is the American style Tonto. Uh, with combo edge or serrations for the first half of the blade or so, then a length of plain edge to the secondary tip, then plain edge to the tip. Uh, always, I've always thought this is a rather odd tanto because basically if you didn't see the edge, if that's all you saw, you would think it was a regular old drop point recurve blur. Uh, this Tonto blade is hollow ground all the way to the end, which gives you a Tonto tip that is extremely delicate and begs the question, why bother making a Tonto at all? You know, most of your Tontos, if they're hollow ground back here in the straight section, the grind stops and then you have a thicker flat ground on this secondary edge from the spine to the tip. Uh, I think this is more of a marketing blade shape than a functional blade shape. And given the, uh, the way this blade has reacted to heavy use, <clears throat> requiring me to fix it several times, uh, I'm pretty solid in that belief. Uh, I find it almost a useless blade shape. Uh, I've got no strength out here in the Tonto area of the tip where you would want it if you were buying this style blade. Uh, you have very little run of usable plain edge. You get about an inch and an inch. Um, really odd. And these, these deep uh, one two one type serrations, not Kershaw's best effort. In fact, if you get the drop point recurve blur, uh, the serrations are those beautiful uh, medium size scallops all one size that work really well and hold up really well. Um, this, this serration pattern, not my favorite and doesn't work very well, doesn't hold up very well. Having said that, um, the drop point blur with the, with the very slight recurve is a really great EDC blade, great slicer. Um, so we're, you know, we're going to sort of overlook this particular blade shape for now, cause there's a lot of good about this knife. Uh, I think, I guess they figured if they put these Tontos on sale at Walmart in blister packs, they'd sell a whole bunch of knives and guess what? It worked. And my buddy Alf was one of those guys who bought one. On the handle, let's uh, take a look. We've got some interesting machining, some beautiful lines and some track tech 
inserts, which are, it's kind of like 3M tape. Um, there's actually, there doesn't feel like there's any sand in this. Um, don't know where they get the, the grippiness from, but it, it feels rubbery. It does grab the hand, but it doesn't hurt. Um, and there is none under the clip where it grabs your pants. That's actually aluminum right there. <clears throat> it's a lot better traction than you would get from a plain aluminum handle, no doubt about that. And it won't rip up your clothing too much. The pocket clip is a good one. It looks just a little long for the knife though, doesn't it? No matter, it works great. And it is reversible, uh, tip down, tip up, right hand carry only. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, that's why I don't have one. I have had one, I've tried to carry it. Um, it just drove me nuts having to flip it over pulling it out of my left pocket um, to deploy it. And if you look, <clears throat> the, the knife has, uh, this has always puzzled me, there is a stop pin in the spine, and it acts as both a closed and open stop pin, but this thumb stud for the left-hander is almost buried against the liner or the scale, which makes it, even with this gorgeous uh, terraced angled jimped surface, it makes it just a little awkward to get with the left thumb. It's not, it, that just little bit of, uh, of distance on the right side from the handle scale to the thumb stud versus the left makes all the difference. It's just a dream to deploy with the right hand. Your thumb just sort of lies in there perfectly. And when you do it with the left hand, you're just sort of feeling for it. And it'll, you, you feel the handle move in your hand because you're not on it square. It's just a little bit odd. <clears throat> and this is sort of an earlier speed safe design from Kershaw. No flipper. You have one deployment method, and that's the thumb stud. Uh, let's take a look at the jumping on this knife. Just a very short run of what four four ridges <clears throat> uh, both on the the handle frame and the back of the blade and they line up nicely and they uh, they provide a little traction. Not much. Not much at all in fact. And a little bit of jumping on the liner for I guess just an index point to close the knife. How's the mechanism? Um, well, it is what it is. You've heard me talk about this before, too. <clears throat> On the lock side of the knife, large phosphor bronze washer. On the off side of the knife, where you need the support the most, because the lock is pushing toward that side of the knife in an area that is hanging over the super tiny washer, uh, you've got a super tiny washer, and frankly, I'm amazed at how well these knives hold up from a blade centering and blade play standpoint, given the fact that on the off side of the knife, there is a super small washer. I mean, the, the thickness from the diameter of the pivot to the OD of the washer is barely a sixteenth of an inch. So, you, you know, you've got this quarter inch hole, and then a sixteenth of an inch of washer, and then nothing as you work your way out from the center. Um, but, having said that, this knife has been beat to heck. <coughs> it's four or five years old. Still flies out of the handle. I have zero side to side play, zero up and down, and when I... Well, I guess it doesn't quite drop free. But it doesn't need to. Because it's got speed safe. Knife's just kind of a joy to operate. So maybe you can make the case that it's lightly built, that the pivot is light duty, that the the liner lock is light duty. But how you know where how's our how's our lock looking after three or four years? Hard to tell against that black blade tang, but it's maybe sixty percent. Probably hasn't moved in a long time either. 
So if this is a medium to large size EDC blade, spring assisted, for a price of, in this configuration, around 50 bucks, you know, in the uh, in the the Sandvik steel knives that are sort of mass production, not limited production, not any funky steels, that's what these blurs are going to cost between 50 and 55 dollars, maybe 60 somewhere. <clears throat> so what other spring assisted knives do we have in that class? Well, let's look at another one from Kershaw. A little later model. This is the Knockout. Um, I sort of would make the case that the Knockout is an improvement over the Blur. You know, let's talk about what's different. First of all, um, let's go back to my issues with the Blur thumb studs. I've got dual thumb studs and they're both more reachable, I guess. The right-handers aren't going to care. Six of one, half a dozen of another. But for us lefties, the thumb stud is more accessible on the knockout. We also have the addition of a flipper. You know, it's hard to be easy to deploy uh, with a flipper and speed safe. If you can turn on a light switch, you can deploy a flipper speed, speed safe knife from Kershaw. We've got the same handle material, the 6061 T6 aluminum. <clears throat> the one area that the, the knockout, I guess, comes in second place to the blur is that there's really no traction. We've got some nice machining, some radial lines, some, some facets that are on different levels. Um, but no track tech, and it's a slippery handle, no doubt about that. You'll remember when I re first reviewed this knife, I had a piece of uh, 3M skateboard tape right here, sort of covering up these two screws and giving me a point to, uh, to grab with my thumb and extract in from the pocket. Actually, that started to bother me a little bit, just sliding my hand down next to the knife to get things out of my pocket. Um, and I can... To remove it from the pocket, just lay my index finger in the curve of the clip and pull the knife out. Don't need the tape. That's pretty secure. <clears throat> so blur wins on texture, definitely, no doubt about it. Uh, the knockout definitely wins in deployment just because it's got another option the blur doesn't have and the left side thumb stud is more accessible. I also think we have a lot stronger lock in the knockout. It has this stainless steel subframe lock that's secured into the handle with these two screws. Much thicker than the liner lock in the blur. So it should take negative forces a lot better. Let's look at size. Interesting. The, the cutting edge of the knockout is about a quarter inch more so let's say an eighth if the if the blur had its entire tip but if you line up frame to frame and go out to the end the blur is quite a bit longer <clears throat> well that's because of the way the the frame comes clear out here on the knockout Actual usable cutting edge, let's call it a tie. They're, they're very similar knives in size, weight, and feel. I like this broad flat ground blade, though, on the uh, knockout better. <clears throat> I don't have a, 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 a drop point blur here, but I really much prefer this blade shape. No recurve, much easier to resharpen, uh, stronger, broader. I just like the knockout better. <clears throat> for about the same price, maybe five bucks more than a blur. Um, but that's another Kershaw. You know, let's talk about maybe another knife that is almost exactly the same size as a blur. Another manufacturer. Feature for feature, about the same. Thumb stud deployment. Um, <laughs> thumb stud deployment, assisted opening. Just about exactly the same size. I'm talking, of course, about the SOG Aegis uh, 
look at my most surprising knives video if you want to know what I think about the Aegis. Cost maybe a little more than a blur. Uh, chintzy plastic handle, horrible lockup. Um, well, the blur, which is what, maybe a 10 year old design now, um, just blows it away. Absolutely blows it away. For a knife that's been around as long as the blur, uh, its challengers for the dollar are few and far between, I gotta say. And a knife that does what it does, you know, a medium to large EDC with spring assist, good quality knife. Uh, decent blade steel, American manufacturer. It's still a really, really good knife for the money. Maybe not quite as good as this other Kershaw, but still a really good knife for the money. Let's take a look at uh, the edge we got on this bad boy. And once again, this I think is the third time I've sharpened this knife for Alf. And it came severely gouged right up here in this uh, second edge, the Tonto edge. Had to remove quite a bit of material again. But boy, did it come out nice. So I'm really kind of getting good at these Tontos on the uh, Edge Pro. Take a look at that transition. Can you see that? Just came out great. So I'll see it again in another year or so. I'm sure it'll still be working flawlessly. You know, this is one of those knives that sort of made me a Kershaw fan back in the day. So well executed for what it is and what it costs. If I were just a right-hander, I'd probably have a collection of these. But I'm not. It's not quite as good left-handed. I just kind of wish Kershaw had stopped, you know. They make, they make great $50 or $60 knives. The problem is <clears throat> when they make knives with, uh, but when they make knives that say ZT all over them and they charge $150, $200, dollars for them, they're still really good $60 knives, uh, which is kind of sad. It's kind of soured me on the brand. So it's good to get a blur back in my hands uh, to remember why I, why I sort of fell in love with Kershaw in the first place. Can't go wrong with this one, guys. Pick a color, pick a steel, pick a blade shape. Just a great little knife. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word and Alf's blur are sharp.